Hi, my name is Bianca and in this video, I'll show you how I painted this beautiful dahlia in watercolors. First, I have a printable outline that you can download for free. Please check the description box if you want to get the free outline. I am using a watercolor block. I'm speeding this part, but you can watch how we transfer the outline drawing to my watercolor paper as neatly as possible. Check the card here to watch the video, or you may also see the link to the video in the description box below. After transferring the outline drawing, I darkened the pencil lines using a 4H pencil. I would like to make the pencil lines as light as possible, but dark enough to see the lines. I'm using graphical masking fluid. I pour a little amount into the cap. I'm using an old synthetic brush to apply, but I dip my brush into a liquid soap before I dip my brush into the masking fluid. Make sure to remove the excess liquid soap before getting masking fluid. I prefer using an old synthetic brush and applying masking fluid for this kind of painting because the brush can cover big areas. I dip my brush into the liquid soap, remove the excess, and then dip my brush into the masking fluid and apply to the paper and repeated this multiple times. I left the masking fluid to dry naturally before painting. Now the mask if you do this try, I will not paint the background. I will do wet on wet for the background. And before wetting the paper, I will be preparing the colors that I will be using. I will be using the colors sepia and sap green. So there, I pre-wet my paints first before I mix them. Okay, so just to activate the dry painting before I paint. So I am going to get my flat brush. This is Art Secret Flat Brush that I am using. So we have two cups of water here. So I will be using the one that is clean. Well, basically both of them are clean. I am just going to use this one for washing my brush for the colors and this one uh, that will remain clean. So I will be just wetting my paper. So when you do wet on wet, there should be no puddles on your paper and let the paper absorb the water for like one, two minutes. In that way, the paint won't stay at the top of the paper, but it will absorb by the paper. Also, when you do wet on wet, make sure that you are using clean water and clean brush. Uh, sometimes I also tilt my paper to other side so I can see if there are any parts of the paper that is still dry. Painting wet on wet is helpful to blend the paint softly. Also, it can help also to have a smooth transitions in every color. All right. In the reference photo, it doesn't have any a clear picture of what is the background, but if you can see that it's just green, so that's what we are going to do. So I have here permanent um, sap green. This is from Windsor & Newton. I will mix this sap green with sepia. So there you go. I will add more of it. Then I will add sepia. Okay. There you go. It's a bit dark and earthy. 
I think I would like to add another color that is mauve all right to meet a little bit of the green and there you go so my paper is damp but I will still pre-wet it with my flat brush so I let the water absorb by the paper and I pre-wet it Okay, make sure that when you do this, there's no puddles and there is no dry area. Okay. There we go. I'm using Princeton Neptune Brown size 8 and I will just um, paint anywhere. I will just do like round strokes it doesn't matter so it would be like there are some areas that are dark and some areas that are lighter so there yeah, i will leave some areas unpainted okay this area i would like to have it darker so it should so my background will be like flat of the same color, same value of color because that will look boring so i would like to make it like interesting with uneven uneven colors of the green so that will be there are some areas that are dark and some areas that are light of course when the when the paint is dry it will be lighter than when you painted it you can add like two or another darker you could add a darker layer okay so there so somehow this is darker but it's fine it's good to play with colors and values when you paint you like to have like darker values that are that is near to the flower And also darker in the areas of where yeah the flower that is near to the flower so here my paper is still wet I'm just using For now, I'm just using whatever paint that is left in my brush and just doing like round strokes. I don't have any special stroke that I am using in this painting. It's just whatever it is. Okay, there you go. So I left some areas unpainted and I will like this is this part is almost this this part is drying, so I will drop some water for additional cauliflower effect for the background there you go the background in the reference photo is blurry you cannot see what's whatever at the back of the flower or around it so it's okay to use this simple background I removed the masking fluid using the rubber eraser. I made sure there was no dried masking fluid left as the paper was clean before painting. Okay, so the background is dry. I removed the masking fluid using the this rubber eraser, but I am checking some parts. There might be like small areas of the painting of the flower that has masking fluid i am taking it off just to make sure that there is no masking fluid left on the flower where i will paint okay i also darkened the pencil lines using four inch pencil it's already dark enough for me to see while i'm painting on it because i will put 
paint later on. Also, I am I prepared there are some colors that I will be using. So first, I will do an underpainting using the ultramarine blue. Okay, so I have here ultra fresh ultramarine. I have also new Cambodge, and this is a mix of French ultramarine and green rose. So that will be I'm using for the color of the main flower. I'm going to paint using the French ultramarine to the areas that has shadows. I will start painting on this area. This area, this is the top. So the, for now, this is wet and dry. But later on, I will be painting this section by section, wet on wet. Okay. Uh, so these are the areas that has the shadows. We can always check on the reference photo where are the shadows are, so it will be easy for you. You may also change the photo, edit the photo, and change it to black and white. And that way, you will be able to see where are the dark areas where you need to be the shadows. So, I'm painting with consistency in French and this paint is from Daniel Smith. I sped it up this first layer because it took me more than 40 minutes in this part but remember in doing the underpainting paint the shadows first so always look at the reference photo as you paint it's advisable if you have the reference photo on your phone or tablet where you can zoom in and out to see more of the details. This underpainting is important so don't skip it. I prefer painting section by section because it helps me focus on the details. On this layer, I was focusing on the lights and shadows. I don't paint everything in one color and then add saturated color on the next few layers. For me, painting the first layer and leaving the other areas white can help to have defined highlights and it's easier to see where the light is from and what areas are touched by the light. You may leave the painting to dry or you can start painting on the dry petals of the flowers first and continue on to the next layer. I painted the shadows and I will start painting on the flower itself but this time I am going to paint on some areas that are dry so I will start there. I will do a somewhat on this. start here first so this is round brush size 7 also set that the brush and I am going to paint wet on wet on this so this area first I will get my mixture of green rose and virtual trimming so I'll it again this ground brush to soften some edges there we go and spread the color this is like the second layer okay, I will leave it to dry and then I will start painting here I avoid this area first because I want 
I want this to be dry or else I will really be painting it this way. So we'll start painting in this area. So we do work on the web and we're doing this kind of painting realistic flowers your water should not be partly there should be just enough water for the paint to flow I added more color or saturation on the area so that it's supposed to be darker but there still wet on black in this area but this part I did the I'm doing this one on dry because it's too small and I don't want the paint to flow too much. To preserve the area. As you can see, I mix my colors when I run out. I have more Kunakadon Rose than French Ultramarine and I add water. For this first layer, the mixture of water and paint is at T consistency. It means it's watery and the paint flows easily on my palette. I use a ceramic palette, it's just my preference because it's easier to mix colors when you run out. I can easily get the same shade and color mix as the previous one. When I add the mix of Kinakadon Rose and French Ultramarine on top of the shadows I painted previously, it shows darker because I painted the shadows first. I will still layer it with more saturated color later. I painted what on what on the big petals. I use a size 7 round brush to wet the paper and I use a size 4 round brush to paint. For me, it's easier like this because I don't have to clean my brush all the time. I can remain my bigger brush clean and I have my paint on a smaller brush. For the smaller petals, I painted wet on dry to prevent the paint from flowing into the other petals. For me, it's easier that way instead of lifting the colors when I make a mistake. Painting the first layer took me an hour because I was careful about the details. I would like to keep some parts of the petals as light as possible and some areas are more saturated. Adding darker colors can help also to show the shape of the flower and its depth. This is just the second layer so remember to always keep it light. Painting in watercolors is always light to dark. I will build the colors later on the next layers. If you find this video helpful, kindly tap the like button. If you want to see videos like this, consider subscribing and make sure you have the bell notification on 
so you'll be notified if I upload a new video. I painted the yellow parts with new Cambodge in tea consistency. Since the watercolors are transparent, I let some of the purple cover a bit of the new Cambodge, but it still shows. I repeated the process of painting with tea consistency of the Grenacodone Rose mixed with French Ultramarine. I painted section by section but I avoided the colors bleeding with each other. Skipping some of the petals, I came back to it to paint once the other side was dry. Thanks to Eric Moore for the reference photo I saw on Unsplash. He has good eyes for nature. If you like to see beautiful pictures of nature, check out his works on Unsplash. He is also available for hire in case you need a photographer. Remember in doing what on what on this dahlia, the paper shouldn't be puddling, just enough white for the paint to flow on the paper. I use a synthetic brush for realistic paintings because it is easier to control the water. For the sepals and stem, I mix French ultramarine and new gumboge in tea consistency. The same as I did on the petals, I painted the big areas in wet on wet and the small areas in wet on dry. I noticed most of my viewers were not yet subscribed to my channel, so I hope you can find my tutorials helpful. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see more watercolor tutorials like this. Remember to tap the notification bell so you would be notified if I upload a new video. If you like this watercolor tutorial, Tap the like button and share this video with your friends who are into watercolor painting. For this flower, I prefer my own mix of green, that's French ultramarine, and the new gamboge. I prefer 
that mix of colors rather than using sap green like what I did on the background. As I painted the sepals and the stem, I still look at the reference photo to see where the dark areas were. However, this part of the dahlia was dark in the reference photo. I changed the color to black and white and then adjusted the contrast to see the colors and shapes well. I let this painting to dry and I'll come back later for the next layer which has more saturated color. I will be painting with more saturated colors. So I have here saturated color of the mixture of the same color the Pinacodon Rose and French Ultramarine. So this time this would be and already on the milk consistency. So milk consistency is quite thicker. It's not moving too much on the palette. It's also with a mix of French Ultramarine and New Gamboge with more consistency. So if you can see, my mixture is quite thick. It's not moving too much on my palette. So that's what we need on the third layer. Again, this would be a third layer. First layer is the shadows. Okay, second layer would be the colored layer of the flower. And now it would be a darker color with milk consistency with, for more saturation. So I will add more saturated colors on some of the areas. I will start here first. Okay, this is already wet on dry. I will be doing wet on dry on this third layer. But if you can see on the reference photo, it has like soft transition to a lighter color. That's why I still have this wicker brush. It's damp, so I will just soften the edge here. Okay, we'll, we'll do, I will add more color here. There you go, and I will soften this edge here okay so we'll wet this again and remove the excess water it should not be watery the brush should not be watery okay there you go next would be i will paint in this area okay I can still see the blue areas that I painted earlier on the first layer. I will just uh, follow it through, but of course, look into the reference photo. In this third layer, I'm adding more saturated colors and I'm adding a bit of detail. By this side, you should see the depth and petal divisions of the dahlia. If you can't see it, I suggest taking photos of your work and looking at it from your phone. It's also recommended to take a break from painting. I also took breaks in between. You may come back tomorrow or later with fresh eyes and you will see which areas you need to work on. Since this is a third layer and the colors are slowly building up, the French ultramarine I painted on the first layer is not visible anymore. I still do the same process of painting as on the previous layers, the only difference is this time colors are more saturated. 
Honestly, I enjoyed painting this dahlia because I like painting the details. I also like when I see my work is slowly coming alive. If you are a beginner in watercolor painting, don't hesitate to mix milk, cream, or butter consistency. Most beginners in watercolor painting mix colors in tea or coffee consistency. Don't be afraid to use darker colors. Contrast will help your painting to come alive, eye-catching, and look interesting. Adding this a third layer helps to identify the details. By this time, you should see the petals look folded. Painting something that has folds on the petals or leaves looks more interesting to me instead of flat looking petals. Watercolor painting for me is like magic. I can transform plain white paper into something beautiful like this. I added this purple dahlia on my Society6 page where you can purchase art prints and canvas prints of my watercolor paintings. See the link in the description box below if you are interested in getting art prints of my watercolor paintings. As I painted this layer, I look at the reference photo to see the details like the lines on each petal. In this stage, you should see more depth in your dahlia. The folds of the petals should be more visible and slowly dahlia should look three-dimensional. Don't hesitate to mix darker colors into milk, cream, or butter consistency. As a beginner, it's a common mistake. It's okay. On this stage, the dahlia should look more lively than in the previous stage. It has more color, more contrast, and more detail. It also helps the dahlia to pop up more on the paper. I'm slowly building a community of aspiring watercolor artists and I will be glad if you sign up for my newsletters to be updated on what I do and what will be upcoming. Check the description box below to see the link to join my mailing list. I speed up this video 10 times. I'm not sure if I'm just a slow painter or if I just enjoyed painting the details. Anyway, it doesn't matter how slow or fast you are as long as you enjoy the process of painting. Honestly, even though it took me 3 to 4 hours to paint this dahlia, it helped me to relax a bit. It's also my first time to paint dahlia. I haven't painted Dada before and I had the courage to record and share with you my process. So if this is the first time I painted this, why do I have a tutorial? Well, my answer to that question would be I've been painting since 2019 and I just apply everything I learned in watercolor painting to this. I made a plan for this painting before I started painting this. Dahlia, I also started the reference photo since I saw it. Now 
This is the last and final stage of the painting as I painted the details. I mix a cream consistency of Caracadon Rose and French Ultramarine. In this stage, I will define the lines and the folds on each petal with more saturated color. I was careful about adding the details on the flower and I still look at the reference photo. I don't want to add a saturated color to the wrong parts of the dahlia. Adding a darker color helped the light areas to pop up more and it gave more dimension to the flower on the paper. Honestly, I didn't expect the result of the finished painting because it was my first time to paint this dahlia and I'm happy with it. I didn't touch the samples and the stem because it looked fine to me. When I was a beginner in watercolor painting, I found painting realistic flowers intimidating but here I am now. If you are a beginner in watercolor painting, don't hesitate to try this kind of painting. It can be challenging, it can look ugly, but then trust the process. Painting takes patience. If you are not patient, then you won't enjoy the beauty of a finished artwork. I know this dahlia is blooming in this season in other places. It's my reason for choosing this subject because I believe there will be people who are in the need of painting dahlia. I enjoy painting this dahlia and I hope you find this watercolor tutorial enjoyable too. It's a long process, but the result is worth it. So here is the finished watercolor dahlia with a background. I hope you like this dahlia and remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more.